This podcast will demonstrate how to install Visual Studio 2010 Express for your work in Web 180 Active Server Pages. The Express versions of Microsoft's Visual Studio simply offer you an inexpensive way to get started with their development software. This website can be found at www.microsoft.com slash express. Once we're there, we simply want to go down to the web area, build applications for web, click on the learn more button. Notice that it wants to install the software through an application called the web platform installer. Go ahead and allow that add-on to be executed on your computer. So I'm going to click that, run add-on, run. Now I want to go ahead and click on free download on the right hand side of this page for a visual web developer. This is also going to include the SQL Server Express and Silverlight tools and any other uh, um, options that we're going to need to create web applications. Again, depending on how your system is configured, you'll get various responses from your computer when this tries to install over the web. By the way, I'm currently running Windows 7 Home Premium on my laptop while I'm uh, installing this software. Once the uh, web platform installer is fully operational, it'll start asking you questions about the software that you want to install. In this case, I want to install the Visual Web Developer 2010 Express. Click Install. It's also going to tell me what it is going to install and what the licensing terms are. I'm going to click on I Accept and notice that it's going to tell you exactly what it is installing during the install process. During the process of installing this version of Visual Studio, you may need to restart your computer halfway through the install process. That's because this is installing Microsoft.NET Framework 4, which is a major feature of the new software. At this point, go ahead and install the, let the uh, install restart your computer. Once your computer starts back up, the next thing you need to do is go ahead and go back to the Microsoft Express site and continue install. The other possibility is that the computer, your computer will actually just ask you to continue the install process via the web uh, platform installer. Either way, you'll need to finish the installation uh, and just let that uh, run its course. The fir again, the first part before the restart was simply to install the .NET Framework 4.0. Once you've completed the installation process, start up the Visual Web Developer 2 2010 Express and allow it to go through its startup process. Basically, it's just configuring the application to run for the first time. And 
let me readjust the size of this startup page. And there we have the Visual Web Developer 2010 Express startup interface. Just to check things out, I'm going to go ahead and tell it to create a new website. And I'm going to let it create a ASP.NET website just so that it creates the very basic elements within the website. I want to make sure I use Visual C Sharp. I'm going to use um, local file system and I am going to change this however test site leave it where it comes up naturally which is in your own directory of files and it's busily going about creating my basic uh, application files that I need to create a Active Server website. And there we go. So we'll be talking about what all these mean down the road. But for now, that's all we need to do to create our first website after installing the Web Developer 2010 Express. In the next podcast, we'll be looking at how to connect to your student server and move files between your development system and the student server file system. This has been Mike Shore, the Web Technologies Department.